Hey, it's Derek here, and this is episode 5, finishing up phase 1 of my adventures in Japan. Right now I'm in Kyushu. In the last episode I spent a couple days each in Kagoshima and Kumamoto. This time I'm spending two days in Beppu and three in Fukuoka. It was going to be a late check-in to where I'm staying, so that means it's time to walk around and explore. There are meat vending machines. I don't know what the name of the store is called. We've got all kinds of stuff. Beppu is a city in Oita Prefecture, and they're known for their onsen or hot springs. The Takigawara Onsen is a very famous public onsen. Public meaning that you have to typically bathe with strangers. And tattoos are not usually allowed, although I didn't even bother to check if it was okay here, because, well, you'll see. All right, you guys aren't even ready for this one. This one is sick. This is probably the coolest place I'm gonna stay in. Check this out. I'm at a ryokan in Beppu. This is my first time on tatami mats. We got the Genkan right here. They had some slippers for me to put on. They're, they're not the wooden ones though, so it's not as exciting. But, uh, so I'm trying to be quiet because there's a lot of people here, but, uh, yeah, you got a whole tatami room with the futon. So that's where I'll be sleeping tonight. There's a fridge and a TV. Sick. Um, these are shoji walls. There's a table and I guess this is where I will be sitting. I don't know if these move. Kind of scared to move them because Yes, it does. Okay, hold on. Well, you don't get much of a view, but it's still pretty cool. I didn't know there actually is a shower in here. I thought it was no shower. Maybe it meant no bath because um, it's just a stand-up shower, but that's fine. And then we got a toilet room. It's got its own little sink there. And a towel. Pretty modern, which is great. Going full traditional for the next couple days. Holy shit, this is fucking sick. I was able to reserve a private bath at my Ryokan. So it's a nice bath here. They have like little wash stations. Sink and some stuff to put your stuff in. Holy shit. The most well-known attraction in Beppu is the Jigoku Hells Tour. There are seven hells altogether, five within close range, and two that you actually have to take a bus to get to. From Beppu Station, there's actually a bus that takes you straight to the main entrance of the main five. The first one is Umi Jigoku, a beautiful blue hot spring and probably the most iconic of the bunch with its crazy steam. It definitely attracts the most people and yeah, for sure I can see why. It was my personal favorite. The red Tori gates from the Hakuryu Inari complements and completes the entire scene.
There were some other ponds nearby, which I easily mistook as the other hells. I would learn later that some of the hells do contain the main hell, along with some other hot springs and ponds. Following the Umi Jigoku, I went to the remaining four hells that were in the area. Oh, and by the way, it's worth mentioning that these hells are given their name because these hot springs reach about 100 degrees Celsius. I don't think you want to be bathing in one of these. After taking the bus to get to the remaining two hells, I have to say the Chinoike Jigoku left a lasting impression. The red water is menacing and all, but the entire area was very relaxing and peaceful. I will say not all of the hells were as mind-blowing as the two that I highlighted, but it's still a fun and rewarding tour with a stamp rally. I mean, still, where else are you going to get to see anything like this? The last hell is sort of a small cave that erupts every so often. I stuck around here for a bit and didn't see it, and here's what I looked like while I was waiting. Back by my Ryokan, I went to the Yumi Town Mall to eat some Hiroshima-style okonomiyaki, and to check out the new Uniqlo Attack on Titan drop. The shirts were 1500 yen each, so I absolutely picked up a couple shirts. Alrighty, I'm in the Mizuka Business Hotel in Canal City, Fukuoka. This is my room. That's it. You can see it all in one angle. Hello. Washroom. It don't look too bad. My hotel was right across Canal City, which is a well-known local shopping center. I went there because I had a reservation at the Kirby Cafe. This is one of two Kirby Cafes in Japan, the other one being in Tokyo by the Sky Tree. As you would expect, the menu has all sorts of Kirby themed foods, burgers, curry, omu rice, including the car Kirby from the latest Switch game. It's a cake. And of course the whole cafe is themed with wispy woods in the middle, and all sorts of Kirby decor along the walls. I didn't want to disturb other customers, so here's just a quick glance. You get a few souvenirs and voila, here's my food. I really wanted the classic looking face for the burger, but they had told me that it was sold out, so that was a bit of a disappointment, but honestly, it was all good. Pretty standard meal, and I chose to take home the souvenir plate. For dessert, of course, I got the Carby. It was a super light dessert despite its size. It's a sponge cake with a strawberry blemanche. Uh, sorry, that's the first time I'm saying that word out loud. <laughs> There's also little mini donuts and cookies as decor. 
the total of the meal was about $50 Canadian, which I would expect from a character cafe. There's a gift shop with all sorts of Kirby Cafe exclusives that you can add to your total. To end the night, I got to watch Neon Genesis Evangelion on the side of a building with a fountain show. Uh, only in Japan, right? Obviously, if there's a Pokemon Center, I make an effort to go. Enjoy my super unstable footage of me shopping around the Pokemon Center, taking notice of the items that were brand new to me. Honestly, I wish I had thought to just use my phone because it's way more stable while I'm walking around, but I gotta work with what I got. They had some cool new socks that were from the Hisui region, um, as well as a bunch of the little silhouette Pokemon here. They also had the wedding Pikachus, but no Fukuoka exclusive, unfortunately. For lunch, I made my way to Ichiran Ramen, which was born in Fukuoka, so I had to get me some tonkatsu ramen. This place is perfect for introverts. You order what you want from the machine and then customize it on the paper once you're seated. The staff will bring your food to you and let you eat in peace. The food was cheap and delicious. Perhaps not the best ramen Japan has to offer, but for a chain, it's consistently good. I walked off the ramen at Ohori Park, which is a nice ellipse-shaped pond. You can walk the perimeter around it or cross the bridges to the island in the center, which is what I opted for. So a lot of people running and biking and walking. It's clearly a great spot for people to get their exercise in or just kind of relax. Later that night, I went to Lalaport, Fukuoka which has one of the giant Gundams. I figured since I saw the Yokohama and Adaiba Gundams, I'd complete the trio by checking out this one. I managed to find some electronic drum kits, so I noodled on that for a bit. I think the three weeks I've been in Japan was the longest I went without drumming for many, many years. There's a jump shop in the mall, of course carrying a bunch of products from all the Shonen Jump anime, and they happen to have a Kumamoto Luffy statue figurine. I kind of regret not buying this one. And because there's a giant Gundam here, it's no surprise that there's also a gigantic Gundam shop. Gundam Side F Fukuoka. It's got a cool history of the anime on display, as well as gunpla kits as far as the eye can see. They had a bunch from the Witch from Mercury series. Um, this was actually all sold out at the Gundam base Yokohama at the time that I was there. Um, sadly, I didn't have any room in my suitcase for it, but you know, maybe that was for the best. Beside that was an arcade with a bunch of the simulator style games, and of course a bunch of claw machines. What is 
Also, they had their own blue lock facility. <laughs> that was, uh, that was cool. I didn't know this Gundam moved, by the way, and I also didn't think I'd be watching anime on the side of a building two days in a row. Seriously, only in Japan. For my last morning in Fukuoka, I started with some fuck coffee, which was below my hotel. It's named after the airport code, so I'm sure it's not really fuck coffee, but it's funnier to me if it is. I bought a mug with their logo on it because fuck it. Later that day, I made my way to Dezaifu Tamangu. By the way, I really didn't have good luck with the rain while I was here, but it is what it is. This is an iconic attraction of Fukuoka, so I had to pay a visit. This was my first taste of some of the real crowds at tourist spots, by the way. It was noticeably more crowded than a lot of the other shrines that I had gone to so far. The main Tezaifu Tenmangu Shrine was actually under construction, so it was all boarded up. You can see it poking out the top a little bit, or, or at least some of the scaffolding. Regardless, many people still visit, particularly students, as this shrine is known for being a sanctuary of learning. They pray for academic success and luck in passing their exams. They can get some Omikuji fortunes or Omomori amulets here as well. I picked up some cold amazake, which is like a fermented rice drink, or sweet sake as it's known. There's no uh, alcohol in it, however. Back near Canal City, I wanted to go check out one of the famous yatai, which are street vendors or little mini restaurant stalls, restaurant carts. The rain didn't let up, however, and uh, while it made for some pretty views, it made having to stand in line at the Yatai extremely undesirable. I really didn't think there'd be such long lines at each stall given that it was pouring, but people were very patient. I, however, was not. Uh, there were a lot of spaces between stalls as well, so it's likely not everyone was set up either. So I ended up passing on this and just eating kombini food. Thank you all for watching this episode of my final days in Kyushu. That just about wrapped up phase one of my trip. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed. After this, I headed back to Tokyo because what better way to celebrate the end of phase one than to go to a bunch of events. <laughs>